Rachel from Seven and All, and I was asked to do a flip through of the, a, a volume from the Apologia Young Explorer series. And so I decided I wanted to show you Zoology 1, The Flying Creatures of the Fifth Day um, by Apologia. This is a brand new edition for 2023. They've had this program before, but they fully updated it. And from everything I've heard, um, people tend to really, really like the updates that were done on the newest editions of this series. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take a look inside this as well as the notebooking journal that comes with it and is a part of the program. So we have our lessons. Lesson one, what is zoology? Entomology, butterflies. Then looks like some social bugs that we're getting into. Bees, beetles, other insects. Looks like we even get into a little bit of flying dinosaurs, birds, feathers, nests. We spend several lessons on birds. Notice that there are not that many lessons. There's about 14. Yeah, there are 14 lessons in this. So these are clearly not the type of lessons you're supposed to do in a day. You spend um, several weeks on a lesson. Uh, and I'll get into the scheduling a little bit more in a minute because this definitely can be used over one year of elementary uh, science in early elementary, especially. So what is zoology? This is where you're getting the look of Apologia's textbooks. They are very, very colorful, including a lot of both photographs and paintings. We're getting to see some of Audubon's paintings right here. Activities are included throughout. And I wouldn't always expect an activity to really equal a science experiment in this type of program. A lot of them are actually not science experiments, but some of them are just hands-on activities. Some of them are very, very quick, while others will be more involved and more complex. So we have our nice gra um, graphic for the different kingdoms and how they all fit together. Getting into the taxonomy of science, families. So then we have activities here. Um, how many butterflies from the swallowtail family can be found in this collection? Then so you have to go through and see which ones of those are swallowtails based on what you just read in the book. Then we're drawing a butterfly, making a butterfly, different small activities. Several of the activities will be connected to specific pages in the notebooking journal and they will tell you that. So, and then here you actually get a little bit more of an experiment. Here you get an experiment. So some are experiments that you'll need more supplies for while others are more of just kind of activities that are like you see this, something that you just do and interact with the page right here in the book. So you can get a feel for what to expect from a lesson. So that was one lesson in it. We can skip to another part of the book. Again, we're seeing a lot of photographs, which I think are really good in science to not just have illustrations, but to have actual photographs can be really helpful when learning about different aspects of science, insects, I think my boys are really gonna love this because insects are life. I did not, I always say, I did not know how much of parenting would involve looking at the insects that my kids caught and saying like, wow, that's, that's really neat, huh? Never would have thought <laughs> that so much of my life would involve insects. Then I'm gonna show you the notebooking journal uh, because there isn't like a test or a quiz book that comes with this. Uh, but the notebooking uh, journal can kind of incorporate some of that summative assessment or just um, putting on the paper, being able to show what you've learned. And you can use it in different ways depending on the age of your kid. I do wanna let you know that if you're looking for a way to schedule it out, they have that right at the beginning of the student notebook. And they, they have a way to schedule it for two days a week. So you're spending, with this schedule you spend two weeks working on that first lesson one. And they, they include what pages from the textbook you read, what activities you do, and what pages from the notebooking journal that you're using during that. So this is a really easy way if you don't wanna have to overthink it and make a whole plan yourself, really easy way. And they, they have it scheduled out for 28 weeks, which 
it basically is a school year. You might have a few more weeks in your school year. Then you could do no science or it gives you leeway to spend longer on some of these weeks or you can add in a fun little unit study on something else, but it does give you some flexibility for sure. Then in here, there's a lot of colorful things, there's a lot of cut out things, and there's a lot of opportunities to write. So depending on the age of your child, if your child's older and they're writing more independently, this is something that they can fill out on their own. If your child is younger and they can engage with the material and narrate the material, but they don't have the skills yet for writing it, then maybe you will be doing more of the scribing for them in this notebook. So you can see that they have some of those exact activities. They have pages for it in here. Here they have that nature scavenger hunt activity. So this gives you a chance that you could check them off here in the consumable notebook so that you're not marking in your textbook at all. Getting to color a butterfly, draw on it. We have a page to record what happens in this experiment. So yes, keep in mind that when you see activities in the textbook, there's probably gonna be a page related to it in the notebook. And you don't have to feel like a completionist with the notebook. Um, yeah, many people will say there's probably more in the student notebook than just about anybody could possibly do. Uh, so keep that in mind. Don't have to feel like, oh, if we're not using every page, we're not learning anything. No, um, but also it's a really good tool. So there's a lot that you can use here. My mom has often used the vocabulary and word search quizzes or the crossword puzzles that they have in some of the other books. She's used a lot of the crossword puzzles as kind of a quiz as you come to the end of a lesson. These are vocabulary words to keep in mind. Core vocabulary from the chapter, Audubon, taxonomy, vertebrates, invertebrates, all of those type of words. And then they do in this edition give you a set of questions which can kind of serve as your end of lesson test um, and have your child answer and write the answers to right here. So it's typically a two-sided page. These I always think are fun. They might be a little bit too crafty for those of you who aren't big fans of crafts, but they have a lot of mini books and mini books can come in many different shapes in the um, Apologia notebooks. But here we're making an animal classification mini book. So we are getting to physically show how um, you get smaller and more specific as you go from kingdom, species, class, all of that. <laughs> Phylum class, order family. Yep, I learned that from lyrical life science as a child. You get a few coloring pages in here. Your activity pages based on the instructions in the textbook. And here you get your, uh, get your end of lesson review a mini book with different ant antennae shapes. Oh, that's gonna be fun. So you, you're getting all this kind of pretty uh, specific and scientific vocabulary. I didn't even know that we had different names for different kinds of antennae. Um, but you're getting all of these with nice bright pictures with the information right here. And you get to make a mini book out of those. That's gonna be really cool. Well, I'm excited about using this. This is going to be fun. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's just quite a variety of activities in here. It's not all just writing, writing, notebooking. Um, you do have, in some of your mini books, you're writing down the information yourself. Um, but that's what you can expect. So some pages will have more writing than others. Some will have, here we're creating a comic strip. Here we have a little bit of a vocabulary um, exercise but you do have a word bank, which is very, very helpful. All right, so I feel like by the end of this, you're probably gonna know a lot about bugs and a lot about birds and flying creatures. So that is what you can expect. We get our little dinosaur, flying dinosaur section. Lots to do. And this is what you can think of for exploring creation with zoology. I hope that this was helpful. If you like this and other nerdy homeschool videos, make sure you like my video and do subscribe because I make nerdy homeschool videos all the time. I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.